Send no, no that's what you've been programmed yeah, to believe, is, no. that they were all, Brian, your understanding, uh, listen, and we're in it, your understanding of, of history is so wrong. Well, I read You think, well, you, well, no, I no, 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 you, you're like, yeah. you're like, oh, uh, uh, monkey, go, go, oh, make fire. Yeah, it's all well, wrong. The, 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 Cavemen yeah. never existed. There were no dinosaurs. Okay, it's all a lie. Yeah. Wait, you don't think there were dinosaurs? There was no dinosaurs. Those were Nephilim giants from the Bible. When people ask, is everything a conspiracy? The answer is yes. Who and what is controlling everything and why? They, they practice sorcery. I can't argue against magic. <laughs> I don't know what it is that we live on, but I believe it's a realm. This realm that we live in is the lowest level of heaven, highest level of hell. Chicken snake gods and the Anunnaki and sorcery. If Sam says the chicken snake god is running everything, I'm literally in the world of crazy. <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> You're losing. Conspiracy Social Club, AKA Deep Waters. Deep Waters. Deep Waters. Deep Waters. I'm Welcome to Conspiracy yeah. Social Club, a.k.a. Deep Waters, a.k.a. Highway to the Danger Zone. Touchy, Touchy subject. 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 Hey, buddy. Somebody came in hot. I want to dish truth. I want to dish L's. And uh, be came careful. Hot. Well, be careful about bringing up any subject because I am brimming with information. Yeah. And yeah. I'll tell you something But else. the question is always on the show, is it the correct information? Wow. Well, I'll tell you what is correct information. Yeah. If you're anywhere near Florida, anywhere yeah. near Florida, <clears throat> if you're in that, in that long state, yeah. I'm, at, I'm at Off the Hook Comedy Club in Naples, Florida. Oh, wow. Do you like have a residency there? I feel I, like you've been well, another week. I love it. Naples, Florida, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Captain Brian doing good stuff. Good man. Comedy Zone, after that, let's go. Comedy Zone, I got to see you out there because I'm going to be doing, uh, that, that's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Where's Comedy Carolina. Zone and where? Charlotte, North Carolina, okay. bringing in the new year. All right. Then Mike Drop Comedy Club, January 4, 5, and 6. I just don't stop. You really, I mean, I, weren't we talking about that the other yeah. day? How this guy just doesn't stop. City lights. Oh, You're shit. You're going to be at Cleveland in hilarities? Yeah, I got West Hills this week. I do my my one hour of spiritual ranting. It's a new show I do. I put it on Rockfin. And then I do Cleveland, Ohio, Pottstown, uh, PA, and then I'm in Pittsburgh. Then at the end of the month, I'm in uh, at my one of my favorite comedy clubs, the Comedy Vault. And uh, new dates are coming up, and we just booked a date together. I I, I feel like I have to remind you. I'm gonna have to remind you every February week. February 23rd. Yes, Bakersfield. Now, do you want to do the 24? No, dude, don't worry about. It. Why do Let's you see how we sell. City lights. Why do you keep saying that? I, Why I you just because that? I move <clears throat> through space with minimum waste and maximum joy. And that's a Chardé song. It's Do you know what song. the ether is? I finally figured it out. What's that? The ether, the ether is the free energy in which we helps um, us yeah, move the through ether, everything. The ether was the... Was, Dude, what if this is water? Well, the, 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 the early scientists who couldn't figure some things out said... No, that no the, that's what you've been programmed that to believe. Is, no. That they were all... Brian, your understanding... Uh, listen, and we're in it. Your understanding of, of history is so wrong well, i read you think well, you, no, 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 no 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 you you're like yeah. you're like oh uh, uh, monkey go go oh uh, make fire yeah it's all well, wrong the, 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 cavemen yeah. never existed there were no dinosaurs okay it's all a lie yeah. wait you don't think there were dinosaurs there was no dinosaurs those were nephilim giants from the bible so the bible's true but science is not looking to make believe thank you thank you so paleontology is all it's just a made up it's all science. bullshit yeah, yeah. And carbon fourteen dating, that's also that's all Man, that might be real, but oh, dinosaurs real. are not Wait, real. That might be hey real? Brian, Brian, let me that ask you something. Real. Brian, let me ask you something. <laughs> when you go to the museum, do you see dinosaur bones? You do, yeah. No, you don't, Brian. Those are plaster. No. That's not real no. dinosaurs. S Sam, Sam, if I, if I may. No. If I may. Okay. Um, Sam, um scientists everywhere in the world, including non scientists, find fossils. Oh, finally. who are non-scientists? My three-year-old children? Oh, people who are in, you know, for example, when I was in Saudi Arabia, one well, of our favorite things to do, Saudi hasn't been underwater for a long time. I don't know if you know that. Especially Riyadh. It's a plateau. <laughs> Hold. As a kid. Uh, uh, well, I'm just saying. As, as a kid. Uh, as a kid. Uh, well, well, I hate it too. Well, I hate kid, it. As a kid, we would it's go. It's not cool. As a kid, we would go to the escarpment. It's called the escarpment. And my favorite thing to do as a kid 
was I would be in the driest place on the planet, driest yeah. place on the planet. And we'd look, and I, I was a bit of an um, amateur paleontologist, yeah. and I would look and find fossils and Does seashells. Does this end where you be molested? Well, I found fossils and seashells, which says that area was underwater at one time. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah, Brian. So, uh, so I found fossils of, 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 of creatures that had, don't exist anymore. <laughs> And that was me. Yeah. I don't think I was a scientist alone, yeah. but I okay. but I but I certainly wanted to be. Okay. Fine. So Sam, the point is that uh, there were dinosaurs. And, no, there were. And, and also there were Sam. Dinosaurs. And also Sam. Those um, are not flimsy. We giants. know that science science does move forward, and I'll tell you why. Ready for this? No, hold on, Things dude. Did you just did you just write that, dude? Your th listen, what you did right there is so ridiculously damaging to the show. What did I do? You said you looked up some and said most dinosaur bones in the museum are real. Well, of it's course not they are. true. Well, of course they are. At all, Dylan. Of course they are. That is not true. Uh, my, my, Just because some idiot wrote it on the internet. Sam, Sam, it's not Sam, true. Sam, you're Dylan. talking. Sam, you are wrong. Sam, you're talking. You owe me an apology. But Sam, you don't know anything about that. For Christmas, I want an apology. You know nothing about dinosaurs paleontology. Yeah, I do, Brian. You know I've done many shows on You know less I've done than more nothing. shows on dinosaurs than you With have. People who okay. don't know anything about dinosaurs. I don't know anything. It's their whole job. That's what they do. No, it's not. That's what they do. You've never uncovered a paleontologist yeah. in your life brian most of the Ever bones if not and every bone in the museum yeah. is not a dinosaur bone and sam cave so cavemen don't exist either worst take ever sam triple e with no evidence he just goes it's not true because he saw a couple of videos on youtube with other people who don't know anything about paleontology or science or anything okay. worst take ever uh, now, sam you will all be apologizing to me just so you know no yes won't be. Um, we'll go sam, on with whatever problem, you're going to talk sam, about with you is that science works we use it every day yeah we we the food you eat that you get every day without thinking it's about full it. of chemicals right but 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 the food that you eat the reason you've never been hungry um, the, the, the supply chain, the growing of said food. Brian, that's all science. Yeah. Brian's biggest it's all science. Theme is everything goes back to science. It's all science. Chain. How do you keep how do you keep aphids from eating your fruits and vegetables? I mean, I'm just talking about aphids now. That's all I'm talking about. Are you fat shaming him? Yeah, hey! Well, I, I, I lost some weight up until I like, this weekend. I like, to, I like to hide an insult. Like I like shit. to hide an insult. It's a it's a two tier insult. Hey, I'm working out more than ever. Yeah. Sam, I know that, and you look great. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Nice smile on you. Thank you, buddy. Um, let's not bring up um, viruses, uh, dinosaurs, that's or fine. I'm totally down with because that. Because you don't know anything. Now, uh, um, <laughs> now, do you think we came from apes or no? Uh, that's no. a question I have. No. I, I, I will say this. I saw something cool. I think we came from Anunnaki who spliced DNA into monkeys and made us. Yep. No, actually, I don't even believe that. I think Anunnaki, I think God created us and the Anunnaki came and then they created lizard people to manage us. Yep. Well, I'm really curious about, I, I, I do think that, that there were different kinds of hominids, like, right, yeah. so yeah. apes and yeah. things like that. Um, but, but here's my question. Yeah. I, I saw something really interesting. I'm here for it. Uh, I think it was Robert Penrose who was talking about um, a Ro certain oh, Rob? a certain mathematician. Yeah. And so, you know, there's this idea, well, we're, we're going to have smart computers and they'll be like humans, right? So meaning yeah. there's an algorithm. So, so everything we think in a very complex algorithm. Yeah. Um, so in other words, when you arrive at a conclusion, you could kind of like back engineer how we arrived at okay, that Okay, I like that. Right? But Penrose said something. I mean, this, oh, who was it? It was the guy who said, you can prove certain theorems so, so you can know certain things are true yeah. mathematically yeah. that can't be proved with an algorithm. Okay, so in other words, um, th there are certain principles that you can deduce, I guess, from that to arrive at a truth. So you can, there, there are certain mathematical equations that, that are the case that you can actually apply to real life situations. So we know that the mathematical equation checks out. Okay. Okay. But you can't prove it using math. So you can't prove it's true. You can't prove it's true using the algorithm. You can't back engineer it. It's a really weird, quite weird thing to come to conclusion of. And what that means is this. Some things are true without being mathematical some things are we know are true even mathematicians are true mathematically that can't be proved mathematically okay. which is really a fucking crazy profound thing okay and so 
he then deduced the fact that human consciousness and thinking is more than math and an algorithm. There's something else going on. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's beyond math. Yeah. It's, um, it's something that we can't even come close to explaining. So, Brian, I think that's very interesting. Because yeah, I think now, it's interesting. Now you're talking about God in a way, right? Yeah, well, so, I mean. So, 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 yeah. So if you go back through the history of the show, why have I dominated so hard? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Why have I been so right and you've been so wrong? Right. Because right. I have a soul. Okay. And I listen to my soul and I go with my soul's feel. My soul says this, my, my soul, or as some people might want to call it, your spider senses, right? Uh, it tells me danger, Tripoli. This doesn't make sense. And I go, okay. So I'm listening and then I go, oh, I start to study it and I go, oh, I've seen this playbook before. So that's why I'm right so much well, because gonna, I gonna, listen to my I'm gonna, soul. I'm going to double down on that because I had a conversation with my wife about why we love you so much. And my wife, you're one of my wife's favorite people. My at what wife, point was this like at the kitchen table after, or why I'm making I'd, love? After I'd finished gifting her my essence. Oh, damn, bro. Yeah, yeah that's I'd the best time. Gifting her my Pillow essence. talk. Thank yes. you guys. Yes. I love you too. I yes. love you too. Yes. And, um, but she loves you and, and uh, she's not, she doesn't suffer fools and she doesn't like a lot of people. And what we were talking about was that you are truly in communion with the best side of yourself. You know, you are in touch with that side of yourself that's as deep and as loving as it gets. You just can't help but be on the side of truth. Thank you, buddy. And it's a, it's, it's, there is a purity to you that I love, and it's why you don't really want anything for yourself. You hate having anything. I hate it. You only want everybody else to have stuff. I got invited to six that, Christmas parties. I only went to one. Yeah, but that's a saintly quality. You you have a holy man in you. <laughs> Thank and I'm you, not dude. joking. You Thank do. you, Mike. Thank you. And so you're you're what happens, I think, with you is in a meta sense, you're right. In a in a macro ma, ma, in a meta sense, you're right about everything. In a in a practical, mathematical, micro sense, I'm right. So you'll say, I don't believe in dinosaurs, or, or I don't believe in, um, I don't believe in evolution. Right. And and I go, I go like this. I go. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of ways to prove that evolution is true. Okay. However, okay, it's true within a smaller realm. Okay. <clears throat> but if you start talking about the bigger realm, it may not be. Evolution may be true within. It may be a truth within a larger truth. Right. It doesn't mean God doesn't exist. Right. See, Darwin came along and said, there's a design without a designer. This happened by accident right. mathematically. Right. But the romantics and the people that were religious, but also very smart, like yourself said, hold on, hold on. You, you're not about to explain this fantastic, insane, infinite misery, a mystery called humanity. Yeah. Uh, or just called existence with your... Uh, with your th little theory here it's, that you can prove, you can point to, and it does have use. It, you, it has medical use. It is there for a reason. They, there are so, so you can have truth with a small t, and then you have truth with a capital T, and you're always dealing with truth with a capital T because you go like this. No, I got this faith in me. I got this feeling in me. I have this communion that I see once in a blue moon that I know is truth. I don't know where it comes from with you, but you have something in you where you are deeply good and you truly believe like in, you just believe in justice and truth, like in a real sense. You do, you can't help yourself. You cannot help yourself. And, it's the, it, it, and, and the minute you see somebody attacking that, you fucking can't take it. Yeah. You're religious. The, the Is that fair? The agrees. So fair. So fair. <laughs> now, he still doesn't know anything. <laughs> Hey, let him do this. You're I right. like getting sucked You're off. Right. It You're feels right. good. You're right. You're right. But let You're me right. just say something. That. We can't have that. Let me say He's this. Still let wrong, me say though. this. He's still right. No. He can okay. tell you how to get to the moon, Come on. not to fucking, not no, to the bathroom. Brian, Brian, you're just right? so off. He's, he's got ass. You're so right. off. You're so off. Uh, it, it, it's just super, yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, it, it's almost like, uh, it just, I just find it so funny because like, can everything be explained through science, everything. No. And that, that to me is like my belief in like the difference between like the hermetic principles, right? And then the laws of physics. It, excuse me, but you know, there's a whole group of people like Stephen Meyer who are trying to prove the existence of God with science. And they do it in a really interesting way, which is they go, 
God exists because we have a mind that wants to understand the universe and is aware that we can't. So you can start to look at that. And everything is code. We know everything is code. Yeah. It's been coded. Yeah. It's for not sure. random. Yeah. Who coded it? Right. Who the fuck coded it, guys? Yeah, I'm with you. And uh it just gets so I don't I think this notion it's very funny to me how like faith in God is mocked by some, but those who mock that faith have just blinding faith in science meaning they'll read a title of an article from science digest and be like we've discovered black holes blah 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 and they just buy it hook line and sinker and that is the word to them yeah but see black holes may exist and no, they but may that's be not very my useful point. yeah but 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 brian brian right so like if you go sam why do you believe in god what I've always believed God, but why do I have a really strong faith right now? Mm. Well, because when I apply these principles that I've learned through spirituality to my life, the my life, principles. my that, uh, that and a, it, my 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 soul, my vibration goes up. Mm -hmm. And when I go the opposite way, of that when I do things that maybe I know uh, I shouldn't be drugs, alcohol, pornography, I get farther from God, and my vibrations go down lower. Right, and I just I feel. It. I feel it's like in sex addiction. They always go, "Do you feel like somewhat guilty after uh, what you what, this act you performed?" And you, yeah, and that's like kind of me going, "Okay, I'm getting farther from God, right?" Like when, if I watch porn, when I know I, I don't want to watch pornography anymore, but I'm bored and I got I've done everything, I, so I watch it. Then afterwards, I'm like, Ugh. You "See, know? that's how I feel." Like I, that's so interesting you say that. I was I was uh, watching. I, I was like, it was last night. No, two nights ago. And I was like, I'm gonna, I, I'm watch, I don't watch porn. I don't watch porn. But I, I went to, to see, I was like, oh, wait, what are my friends doing? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to watch. <laughs> let me see, let me see what's to. going on. Let's see what and my friends And immediately I to. saw this, this, this porn. And th th God damn, there are some good looking people out there. Yeah. You know, I mean, Jesus, there, there are some people that if you want to get into that. By the way, did you notice he didn't say women, but he said people? Oh, well, well, men and women. Yeah, Brian, like, it's okay. I not, love you for you. Not that I was watching Blacked or anything, but, <laughs> but it's like the best thing <laughs> I've ever seen. I love the honesty on this show. And We're Gypsy's seen, gay. And he's not being honest. Were you watching Blacked? Well, of course, but <laughs> what is... The point is, and then I and then oh. I saw the biggest piece I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and my wife uh, yesterday was wrapping Christmas presents, and she's in her moo moo, and she's and I go, you got to see this. She goes, I'm wrapping Christmas presents. Get that shit away from. Oh, me. you shit. That's love right there, Brian. That is probably the most I've loving a, thing I've look, ever I seen do in my well, life. I got that you share interracial pornography with your loving look, wife. I have a piece on me. I, I do pretty well, but this guy, I've never seen. I was like, what? And he was a good looking, kind of muscular. I was like. What is this? Brian, is that's no how I know that you're going to have a long relationship because most men would hide that. And that becomes that becomes something that could call that could fester. Well, see, I the, my, my 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 larger point is that I didn't watch it. And the oh, reason I, 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 I really Okay, didn't. we had honesty, now we don't no, have honesty. No. So what happened You was, looked at the big piece didn't see it go to work? No, no, no. So when I was alone on Saturday, I was like I'm 56 and I'm about to watch porn, and I'm probably gonna jerk off. And I go, and I go, I, 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 I what happened to me? Because I'm kind of getting into the spiritual realm yeah. as well. Is I went, <clears throat> I, I looked at these two people, and I went, and I looked at Pornhub in general, and I went, this is vibrating at a very low level. Yes. And I used to vibrate there. Yes. Like I, I, I understand. It's, it's, it's the spiritual yes. versus the material. Yeah, and you're also you're also worshiping that. That is your God. So your God, the God of the erection. Yes, you know is is your God. Yes, and so <clears throat> I was watching. I, I was I was like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this because because I can. I, I, I was I, I'm just older, and I was looking at these people, and I I said to myself, you know what I said? I go, I hope I hope that they evolve to a point where they realize this is vibrating at a low point. Yeah, they're, they're not doing good things to themselves. It's not about what they're doing out there. It's what they're doing to themselves. Yes. And I'm, I'm sorry to sound like a complete fucking donut this way, but when you get older and if you keep trying to get to this higher truth, this yes. idea, yeah. you will understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, I totally I'm agree. not saying that, you know, it's, a, it's really hard not to jerk off. It's really not hard not to look when you've got this high level porn. Yeah. With the best looking people. Yeah. And they're going to give you anything you want. Yeah. 
I don't think you get away with that. I yeah. don't think it's good for you. Yeah. For, for reasons that I don't want to go into because it's you would have to just experience what I'm saying. And yeah. you, you understand what I'm saying. I do agree with the, everything you're saying you right You vibrate. There. You vibrate. Do you get closer alone. to God? Do you get farther from God? And it, like this kind of like guilt you mm -hmm. have after is like that is that is the universe telling you that this is probably not the best thing you could do. Like there's different forms of <laughs> messages from the universe. Like I think depression, anxiety, sadness, like these, this is the universe telling you like you're on the wrong path. But in our modern culture, how do we deal with that? We go to therapists, we say, well, I'm sad. And then they're like, here, take these drugs and numb yourself out and continue down this fucking path. Like instead of doing you going, I, I'm looking at this giant black piece right there. And normally I'd be like, let's watch us do some damage. And then I realize that that does not fill the the god hole in my my soul even though it's big enough to fill the god hole but i know, I know. that's it. so so we had adam 22 on and he was talking about this yeah I'm starting yeah sky brie or yeah Bree i'm sky? just what's her name sky that guy vibrates on such a low level bro well well i don't know anything uh, he seemed very we know that there's very, we got about seemed, 200 seemed, 300 episodes of that oh, he seemed very nice he seemed like uh, you know he's but, like but he's he's, a, in, he's in a place where he is and and you know he's he's doing whatever whatever he's doing but um, he was talking about this girl, Sky Bree or Bree Sky, that he brought up. Who was the best looking girl I've ever seen? She was, was she is gorgeous. Target. And and I and I and I looked at her and I, I remember th I was thinking to myself, I, I I she's as perfect as it gets. I don't want to see her do anything like that. And you know I what's so funny I don't about that, Brian? See it, man. There is there's some stuff that like she is so attractive. That she should be attracting like CEOs. That's right. And, and like or just D one athletes. Or just having the or just having the perfect person. No, for no, no. Her. Like there's a reason. Like yeah. God made, and by doing what she's doing, she's bringing in low vibrational people. Apparently, she quit. Apparently, she's not doing it anymore. Yeah, I mean, which like, is good. Like, and I, was like I, I think you can't listen. I have a lot of porn star friends. I, I think that it's so funny. Like I used to know. I, I used to be friends with Belladonna, who is on the Mount Rushmore. It's my, my favorite. My, one of the greatest. Uh, my my B hole is haunted. One of the greatest productions of all time. Okay, so Amazing. so. Amazing. She used to do the Naughty Show all the time, and like I always say, the Naughty Show was be in head of its time, but it was also different than what we're seeing on t on YouTube right now, which is like a, I never glorified them. It was more about. You're a real outlaw. Tell me about your life. Like, it was more about this, like, these people live on the fringe. Like, what's that like? Now it's like trying to mainstream it, and I think it's a dangerous game that young women in particular do not understand what they're getting into. And it's like they're mistaking, like, infamy, which is, I'm sorry, if you're a porn star, are you famous? Maybe. Are you infamous? 100%. And those are two different vibrational yeah. things, right? So um, <clears throat> you have these girls now doing this, and this Brie girl who is, like, as perfect as you could get in, the, in as perfect as you could she's get so beautiful and now because she's doing this did this low vibrational stuff she has limited the amount of mates male mates you can make like high-end earners that want to date that person so now what you're letting in is low vibrational people and you start to live in this low vibe and i have this theory brian that whatever phase women get pregnant in is the phase they're, they're in for the rest of their life right so if they get if they're in their band phase and they get knocked up by a guy in a band they're always hanging around with bands right if you get knocked up by you're in your black guy phase you now you're always dating you're always in that you hang out with black guys all the time uh, you know so whatever phase you get knocked up in is the phase you tend to stay in and that that has some that's kind of what i'm talk about if you allow these and listen i was the lowest of low vibrations like i was in motel six with shady people doing shady shit because i was really lost in my disease right i i, I talk about times i got kicked out of the hotel that i was paying for because i was the weirdest guy in the room they're like dude you're creeping us out get the fuck out of here right i'm like oh like like i'm like wow because in recovery they talk about low uh lower companions and i hate that term because they're not lower companions. You are engaging with them in that low vibe. So you guys are all together. So that's on how it. I feel about it too. I don't, I don't like. I don't like looking at a porn star and saying, "Well, you're lower than somebody." No, I don't believe I, what that. What I do is I go, "We've all we all have that in us. Everybody, like all of us have that 
in us. We have a porn star. We have a saint. We have a sinner. We have a saint. We have a we have a thousand things in us. So I don't ever like saying, uh, "Well, you're here and I'm over here." I, I'm older. I, I've I always say I've I've made more mistakes and, and and spent more time chasing the wrong things. Yeah, that's the difference. So yeah. I I just go. I just I know what, how that turns out. Right. That's all. Right. And so um, now when I see that and I see someone who's doing this stuff, I I, I think I just say I I hope. And I hope and I believe you will understand that there's a higher vibration. Yes. So. Yeah, and you can't, I mean, like, no, you're no, not. No big deal. You're, it's very weird. Like, you do, you aren't defined by your past, but that is part of what defines you. Do you understand what I'm yes. saying? I've also had people say what saved my marriage was porn. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that porn and people that do porn don't serve a certain function sometimes because there's that side of us. But I'm not going to, I'm, you know, so I, I don't, I'm not going to be a hypocrite here. Okay. What are you doing? You're pressing buttons. Okay. Do we got any conspiracies? Do you to get think into? there's any conspiracy to porn? Oh, 100%. Yeah, we've been fucking around. I'm sorry. No, dude. Pornhub. in a while. Pornhub is CIA. Pornhub is CIA. 100%. Hold on. There we go. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Jesus. Pornhub. Pornhub is CIA. Yeah. But porn, but porn is something that is a multi billion dollar business because people, want it so yeah my favorite part is like porn got so popular that they ran real like commercials like i saw an f-150 commercial and yeah. like before a interracial gangbang video <laughs> right it's like they, i mean like dude it's getting millions of views they want them. so uh, so so what what do you what are you thinking then well Pornhub uh was free it was the, it was the quickest website to 50 million uh visitors or subscribers than any other website ever. It was the quickest one to that. And well, what Pornhub does is like it get, it gives you what you want, and then it makes these suggestions that take you deeper, deeper. And next thing you know, you're watching trans porn. You're like, what am I doing here, right? You know, and, you know. I, I, uh, dude, I found this crazy. Okay, thing so so, but also Brian, there's also some very much darker stuff too. And is that evidence the CIA created Pornhub? So listen to me. So what's also crazy, Brian? Sam Triple on the Tinfoil Podcast keeps saying the CIA created Pornhub, and I can't find anything. Oh, wow, that's out there. Please give me a link. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this: <laughs> is is that that's evil. so funny? Evil. That's so funny. But if you really study it, right? Like, why is it free? Like, so when we we know it's Brian, when when something's free, you're the you're the product, okay? And they're giving away all this free stuff. They they hire the the most expensive lawyer. So if you sue Pornhub for stealing your thing, you gotta deal with the best of the best lawyers, right? So so what what Pornhub does is it starts putting like some like kind of questionable videos on there and they've gotten in trouble for it. Like you know, sexual assaults are on there when they beg to be the people in there, beg them to take it down, all this stuff, questionable age stuff. But you're like, why is it on there? Well, what's really interesting, it's a giant honeypot. They study who's commenting on these videos, who's watching these videos, mm -hmm. right? Now, I'm going to go to a place where Brian doesn't want to go to, but everything is data, bro. Everything is data. That's true. So they start studying data yep. and they start studying who's watching these super young videos, right? Like where it's questionable. They start, they start, the, the people they follow are, that. I, I like that. Who are you? What do you, oh, do you have, do you have political aspirations? Are you, do you want to, oh, you want to, we're watching your stuff. Oh, are you thinking about running? Are you in the Democratic Party? Are you in the Republican Party? Hey man, what if we can get this guy into a position where we know what his like weak spot is yeah. and position him into that, which is what Epstein was on a very bigger scale. Mm. 100%. I love that. Well, if you were FBI or something like that and you're, and you're responsible for child, something awful like child pornography or whatever, you're going to follow those. You're going you're gonna to follow those leads. Guys who are into really young. Oh, you're into that. Okay. Let me see what else you're into. What do you think about these, uh, these Instagram accounts and YouTube accounts, Twitter accounts, where they go after these guys. I think if you're catching pedophiles, I'm all about it. Yeah. I mean, when I, you I, study sorry. these guys, they're all like just wrecked. Like the guys that they catch, they're all beta cuck. They're super wrecked. Like it's like, it's so, it's like, 
I don't know. I, I can't watch that stuff. Yeah. I, I get a little what, too What do you think about up? Florida? My, that with the law they just passed, this guy they just busted, who's engaging in it and filming it, is up possibly for the death penalty. I, I again, if you're if you're killing pedophiles, you're you're not going to see me out uh, on the street protesting with a sign. Yeah, uh, you know, I uh, I don't think there's anything more evil. Yeah, I and, agree. And uh, so you know, you can put them in jail with general population. See how that works out for them. You know, so even even prisoners of the worst kind don't don't can't stand for people that hurt children. And so, you know, um, now, now there are a lot of professors and scientists who are like, look, this is, this is neurological. This is something they can't help. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. If it's something you can't help, put yourself down like a sick dog. I don't give a fuck what you're, you know, I'm not interested in, in helping people like in the way you think. I want them removed from society. If you think the death penalty is inhumane, that's all right. Then just put them away, though. It's like I, you can't, if you kidnap a child or you did something to a child like that, I don't believe in a 10-year sentence. I, I believe that you never get out. Yeah, Rogan had a joke about that, about, oh, he used to have uh, uh, kids, and now he doesn't. Like, no, dude. No, sorry, dude. Yeah. That's uh, not that's not going to work. Yeah, and uh, listen, we understand also the psychological damage uh, not just physical harm that does, but the psychological damage it does to somebody. You basically make it impossible for them to live a normal life after that. Of course. So what else we got? Uh all right, let's stay on the god train for Yes. A choo choo. Oh, this is you're going to love this, Brian. I when I saw this, I go, "Oh, Brian's going to love this." Is the first letter in Torah. If you go every letter is the first letter in Torah. If you go every fifty letters in the book of Genesis, you will get the spelling of Torah. If you go to Exodus, if you go every fifty letters, you get the spelling of Torah. If you skip Leviticus and go to Numbers, you go every forty-nine letters and you get Torah spelled backwards. And if you go to Deuteronomy, every forty-nine letters you get Torah spent backwards why they're both pointing to leviticus in leviticus every seven letters you will get the spelling of yahweh y h v h every seven letters throughout the entire book of Bro. Leviticus, because leviticus shows it would take the sacrifice of the perfect lamb of god jesus christ to atone our sins i mean that's amazing is that true yeah why would he lie i'd have to see if that numerology is true because numerology is tricky. You can, you can mess with numerology. But that's not numerology. Yeah, but... There's no numbers in that. So I, I plugged it into a character counter. And, um, and it's, it's just iffy because, you know, there are different versions of the Bible. Uh -huh. Are we using... Uh-huh. Commas. Uh -huh. I, mean, I know he said letters specifically, but I... I will say this. If you look at the uh, if you look at the Israelites and how um, when they were in the desert, when you look at the camp to the north, the camp to the, the south, the camp to the uh, east, and the camp to the west, they they camped out like that. It forms a cross if you count it. So that's kind of interesting. I find it interesting. I, I I've been doing what? what so is that? this is uh, an article confirming the pattern. That guy was talking about, dude. That's pretty incredible. So, that's, Brian, have that's, you ever? That's crazy. Have incredible. you ever heard the theory that basically, like, there's two? I've heard two crazy theories. One that basically the Bible is like an AI, is written in AI style, right? And then the other one is very weird. Is and it's what? just that the Bible is almost like the storyline of this simulation and that the simulation is basically running off the storyline yeah. of the book yeah therefore 
Because I have a friend of mine named El Dorado. Well, that's his nickname. His name Tony Dorado. In college, he got very religious to this day. He still celebrates it. Like, he says that the day of rest is not Sunday. It's actually Friday. Yeah. And they break it down, and he doesn't leave his house, and his family does it. And I've thought about quitting comedy and just starting to do the day of rest. I'm really getting into 12 commandments. I'm trying really hard. Because the rule, he says, as long as you have God above all, Jesus in your heart, and you follow 12 commandments, you can get wait, into heaven. Wait. Okay? Hold on. Did you say 12 commandments? Oh, t 10 commandments. Excuse me. Oh, 10. 10. So, hey, bud. People make mistakes. Well, I'm functionally illiterate, bro. That's a big a, mistake. That's a huge mistake. Yeah. I know it's a huge mistake, Ten and I just that's cleaned it up. really, really bad. Yeah. Well, it's not really, really bad. It's, it's, a, it's not really bad. No, it's a grave And error. I'm sure that at some point there were 12, and they just got rid of two and it's, just said, let's just go with the era. It's a grave era. Why, why, are there, why are there 12 people on a jury? Do you know why? Why? Because there were, here's the question. Was it because there were 12 tribes of Israel or 12 disciples? I don't know. 12 disciples. Can you look that up? No, Did I, you just make that up? I believe you. No. How come you just believe what he says and then you have to research what I say? Well, because that sounded like absolute bullshit. No, because you have no Lord in your life, bro. That's not true. You have no Lord in your life. Um, he has a tattoo of um, the God Pan. So, so Brian, I just want to say, do you really? On his back. Covered you have over. Pan on your back. No, but Pan is very important to me as a child. We won't get into it. You really are a wood he's gypsy. A, he's Unbelievable, he's bro. He's got an impossible erection, and he's got the hindquarters of a What goat. do you mean he's got an impossible erection? Pan? Pan's got a... Bring up Pan. Yeah. The God Pan. You really are a wood gypsy. So, so yeah. Brian, so my buddy El Dorado. He, he got super religious. He would tell me all this stuff. And literally before he was telling me the story about basically how 9-11 was going to happen. Before 9-11, right? So he, he told me about the EU forming before the EU formed. <clears throat> he brought us all this stuff. So now he's been telling me that basically what's going to happen is the EU is going to step in to the Israel-Palestine situation and be kind of the security force. I know we'd moved on, but... See the hindquarters of a goat there? He's got... That he's was got tattooed on your back, bro? No, it's He just, wants it, though. No, I don't want that. You want to get this rock-hard dude he's with horns and hooves? crazy hard so dong. I don't want that. Yeah. Hard dong all the time. Hard dong. He runs with a hard dong all the time. All the time. I, I have erections for long times. It's very weird. If you looked like that, if you were that muscular and you had the hindquarters of a goat and you had horns, you know how many girls would be all over you and you had a piece like that? Yeah. Girls would, if you... you they would only have sex with you in cemeteries, pan. though. That's huh? the only problem. They what? They'd only fuck in cemeteries. They would fuck you in the forest. And yeah. And keep her safe in the forest. And she would be a nymph. So, Brian, so I just want to put that out. That's that. And I think what we're seeing in, in Gaza right now is getting incredibly close to that well there does seem to be something oh well he's having sex with a goat hmm. and and so you, did you have, you have that, that tattooed up? on your back what i'm what i'm attempting to do is bring the pictures up um, before you guys can really get into Israel Gaza, because no, we're that, not going to. But think about, not going think to. about. Think about. I send you other stuff. The what else we that got? Made that statue forever ago. Yeah, people have always been wild. That was the equivalency of porn. You didn't let your kids see that statue. And that uh, thing is but by the way, stuff. imagine working on that every day and then revealing it to it's everybody. Amazing. They definitely fucking stoned him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you could say that Israel Palest uh, Palestine or Israel Gaza is. Um, this is nothing new to the Bible. The Old Testament's been, this has been going on forever. It's kind of crazy. What hey. else do we got? Uh, Brian, are you aware of Operation Condor? Yeah. Yeah, I've read, uh, I think, something about Operation Condor. Let me, before you, let me see if I can remember something about it. Okay. Yeah, 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 does yeah. it date back to the 70s? It does. Yeah. Brian, Brian, real it quick, as you're talking, I'm just going to grab this bell. Operation Condor. Yeah. I, I think, um, what was it? Um, did it have something to do with our listening in on Soviet spies? No. no. Oh, it might have been, uh, hold on. 
Uh-huh. Right now, Brian is just like he's looking at the wall when, like, when you write a script, you have all these plot points, sure. and he's is just it, trying. Ah, uh, CIA, is it, is it, is uh, it, is it, jungle, is it an assassination si- program, or is it, or is it a psychedelic program? Former assassination program. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's bring it up and let me see what we can do. Why do you have that cadence? Yeah, why do you have no, that cadence? I know that. I, I listen. I'm not. I, I am. I am very aware that the CIA has done things that are. No, you have not been aware of that. You've actually pushed back on it very hard. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's true. 100. percent Are you going to read uh, it? So. Operation was a United States-backed campaign of political repression, state terrorism involving intelligence operations, CIA-backed coups, as well as assassinations of left-wing leaders in South America, which formerly existed from 75 to 83. This is 100% true. Operation Condor was officially and formally implemented in November 1975 by the right-wing dictatorships of the southern cone of South America. Um, due to its clandestine nature, the precise number of deaths directly attributed to Operation Condor is highly disputed. Some estimates are that at least 60,000 deaths Damn. can be attributed to Condor. Um, with up to 30,000 of these in Argentina. That's Damn. right. Uh, which was, uh, was Argentina Pinochet or was that, um, or, or was that uh, Chile? I think Chile was Pinochet. Yeah. But who was in charge? They, they, they assassinated Allende. Uh, Allende was the opposition to that. And there's no doubt that the CIA... Videla. Yeah, did a lot of killing. Yeah. With the help of the the military dictatorships of South America. And they killed, they killed not just... And so what you have to understand is the CIA would give the names to the death squads and military intelligence apparatuses that we trained and armed in South America. So we would, we would say this teacher over here, this teacher is uh, teaching, you know, Marxist ide- ideology to kids or to these students, or these student leaders are died in the world leftists. And what they would do is they would take them. They, the CIA would just go, it's just a, we have just, we've been listening in with our devices. Might want to take a look at these guys. And those, knowing full well that the militaries would, uh, there would, would uh, take them. They would put them in a dungeon with water up to your ankles, and they would electrocute the water. And they would just get you to be like, oh, fuck, this really sucks. Now, you do that for three days. That really sucks. Or how about this? They would get um, the women who were involved in this, or the men, and they would put you in uh, on your hands and knees, and shackle you, and they'd bring in giant schnauzers, and they would have the schnauzers rape you. Ugh. And that was a fact. Or I, got, I can keep going. A lot going. of bestiality on this show Oh, today. I can keep going. Very they t- intelligent they'd, animal. To but if you were a real problem, if you were a real problem... They would take a rubber mask and they would paint it with rat poison and they'd put it on your face and you'd breathe it. And what that does is after three days or whatever, you go crazy permanently. So you leave that dungeon like a babbling idiot on the street. So there's no doubt that human beings can come up with amazing ways to destroy you. But let's not forget also that in uh, Chile, under the Pinochet regime, they would just throw you out of a, a plane. They would shoot you out with something that stopped your heart and they'd yep. throw you out of the plane. Yep. And you'd be in the middle of the ocean somewhere and you'd never be heard from again. So that happened to about 3,000 to 6,000 people that disappeared. Yep. Here's my question to everybody. That was, in many ways in South America, there was a, an insurgency going on, a left-wing insurgency, in some ways a low-grade civil war, in some grades a not-so-low-grade civil war between left and right. The left was being supported by the Soviets. The right was being supported by the Americans. And there was, there was one side was going to win. And if you look at Chile, if you look at Argentina, if you look at these countries, they're actually doing, they are now doing pretty well. They're messy democracies, but they have the bones of democracy. And economically, they're doing way better than, say, Venezuela, um, countries that turn socialist. So... People justify these things by saying, if it wasn't us, believe me, the leftists would have killed us. You know, so when you see this, when you see the military regime or the people that were for, for capitalism or the people that were making money, they go, uh, we're going to get, I'm not excusing this. I'm saying that to them, they were like, the left here is galvanizing. They're arming themselves like the Sandinistas did. And we're in a war. 
and they're going to kill us if we don't kill them. And that's what happens. That's what happens when two um, ideologies are born. It's tough, right? I don't. I don't know. I just think divide and conquer so you can take up all the natural resources. And well, also, that's what I'm just saying. It's the, we're, uh, whether we're talking Latin America, Africa, yeah. you know, uh, parts of Asia, we just are de and I, you know, and it upsets me because I don't think, listen, obviously America does it, but I don't think it's the American people. And this is a part of capitalism that I think like wood gypsy would push against where it's like, okay, you love capitalism. Well, what about the destabilization of these other countries to steal their natural resources? I love capitalism in that I can create a, a product, a business and see if you can compete in a marketplace of ideas. And the person with the best business yeah. tends to win yeah. that part of capitalism. I like yeah. the part of capitalism. I don't like, like is going to other countries, banana republicing them, and just stealing the, all their natural resources, using our children as as. Um, Here's my only issue with that. So take North Korea, Singapore, Japan after the war, and then take um, and then take uh, the Philippines as as an example. Uh, take the Philippines, and for that matter, even India and Pakistan. Yeah. And those countries had very, very strong anti-Western sentiments that kept, that kept that Western influence, Western investment out because of that, right? They were like, you're not going to turn us. You're not going to do to us what you did to Nicaragua and things like that, right? And what's the irony there is that when the other countries allowed all that foreign investment, they went poor for a while, but their standard of living is way higher now than, say, the Philippines, because the Philippines made the mistake, and so did a lot of countries in Africa, of saying, we don't want your Western influence here because you guys are going to exploit us. The problem was it then opened them up to a different ideology, which was communism and socialism. And that's when the Soviets and China and just themselves came in and but said... But Brian, that. Brian, so it is well documented that like France has assassinated like 27 no, I'm not saying I'm not saying the French to did. destabilize yeah. well, the, well the more more not just to destabilize also to say hey this guy is a socialist this guy's a communist he's trying to come in and there's going to be a revolution and we're not going to be able to do business here or whatever yeah and they were killed um, but what I'm just trying to say is that in the countries that did allow foreign investment uh, their standard of living they're now doing pretty amazing versus the other countries all right so. so what do we got here dude this is a wild interview i mean this is like it's just crazy to me that anybody thinks this guy is anything other than evil well, he and shorted the british pound right isn't that what he did uh yeah we can he just bet it. against it <clears throat> we can he he shorted tons of currencies um, yeah but that doesn't mean just because one guy shorts a currency doesn't mean the whole world's like oh no like he was just he said he looked at their economy. He's like, the, the British economy. He's like, I'm going to short it. I don't think it's worth what they're saying it's worth. Yeah. And he took positions against it. We should and he made the, a fortune. Play the video. Play the clip so people know what we're talking about. There we go. Two years you've been blamed for financial collapse of Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Japan, and Russia. Yeah. All, of the, all of the above. Uh, all of the above. Yeah, yeah. Are you that powerful? <laughs> no, I think there's a great misunderstanding. I am basically there to, uh, to make money. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences of, of what I do. As a, as a competitor, I've got to compete to win. As a human being, I, can, I, I am concerned about the society in which I live. Which George Soros am I talking to now? The amoral George Soros or the, the moral George Soros? Uh, it's one person. It's one person who at one time engages in amoral activities and that the rest of the time tries to be moral. So can I just give, a, can I, because I looked at that and, and sent it to some people. And so when you're doing business, I think what he's talking about there is that he saw that this country was, was making big, big gambles with their currency and that their currency was jacked up artificially. And he was like, this, is, this currency is not worth this because I'm looking at their GDP, okay. I'm looking at their trade practices, I'm looking at their economy, I'm looking at how they do business. And they don't, th this, is, this is, I would not bet on this country. So what he does, like anybody can, is he takes a strong position against it. Now, when you do that as George Soros, 
and you you have a reputation for good investment practices. In other right. words, you're on the winning side typically right. of the gamble. Right. A lot of other people go, hey, Soros is betting against us. What does he know that we don't know? Because he's kind of a wizard that way. Right. So all of a sudden the market goes, hey, did you see what Soros did? I'm taking his position. I want to jump on the back of that guy. Yeah. And so all of a sudden you get this. Yeah, this I, I understand. So, so, for, so I think what he's talking about there is I'm amoral in terms of this is the marketplace. I don't give a fuck. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the reality and I'm going to bet against this fucking right, country. Right, that's kind of, right. I think that's, that is something. And he made a fortune doing that. <clears throat> right. He made a fortune. So that's, that's just a guy who says, I don't think the pound's worth this. And you guys are all saying it's worth right. this. And I say bullshit. But there's a lot about George Soros that isn't good. And the notion he's that- He's got a very left-wing sort of like ideology. Well, he, he's, you know? uh, he's a destroyer of worlds. Well, he also, you know, believe it or not, uh, you know, Sam, you may have more in common with George Soros than you think in the sense that he doesn't believe in American hegemony. He, he, he doesn't want the United States to be insanely powerful because he doesn't approve of their behavior around the world. Right. And he's been vocal about that. It's really fucking, it's like, well, dude, you live here, you made a lot of money in this country. But that's what he says. He's it's an, an interesting in thing, isn't it? It's like LeBron James sitting down for the, for the national anthem. How do you feel about that? Well, I think LeBron James is an agent provocateur and a controlled opposition guy. He's, he has a tattoo of the boule, which is a secret society, on his chest. So he's 100% involved in that. Uh, don't do that because we did it last episode and, and it's true. Well, <laughs> he makes money. He makes a lot of money. He's, he's made a billion dollars off the American system. So you're welcome, LeBron. My problem with George Soros is that he, uh, he, you know, the notion that he's just, oh, I'm just trying to make money. He, 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 listen, he's a guy who sets a fire that collects the insurance on it. That's my opinion. Mm. He does a lot of that. He's doing it with these DAs. He's destabilizing the country right now. And he's a giant part of that. He is funding these extremist DAs who are, listen, I watched this video, man. I would love to send it to you. You'll never watch it or you'll make five, get five minutes into it and be like, turn it off. But it really is this whole thing, these these bankers at the highest levels and that's not code for anything brian and it's just <laughs> like and, and what they do is it's pressure from above pressure from below there's a very famous case in this video where one of these very high up in in the college communist movement well, he fucking decides he's going to testify in front of court about what's uh, in, in Congress about what's going on. And he's basically like, we have billionaires funding these movements. And it's some called pressure from above, pressure from below. Mm -hmm. And what they're basically doing that, is though. they're causing economic chaos here. And then they're funding this kind of just complete and utter disturbance from below. But what, what if, what if that, and I'll, so I'll, the end result, I'll Brian, is that. let me tell you, they want one world government and they want martial law. And if you watch what's going on right now, we're in the States with nobody getting arrested, people acting a fool in public, that is all demoralization. So I, I will say this, um, here's where we differ. I'll say that people who have a lot of money, like whoever they might be, some people have crazy money, right? Whether it's Elon Musk, whether it's George Soros, whether it's Bill Gates. I think what happens is they, um, they get this money, like as a human being, and you go, I got I, I to gotta do something with this money. Like I got to change the world, in my view, in my image. And you're going to do things, you're going you're gonna to do things with your power. And my feeling is the road to hell is always paved with good intentions. I don't think that these are evil people. I think these are people that want to make an impact on the world so that they go down in history as the person that built this right. or did this. Right. That's what kings do. Right. And so I think, though, again, it's like we have to be very careful of rule by man, not rule by law, because man is flawed, and man will try to remake history and the world in his image. And that is not usually a good thing, right? Brian, what so, you're talking about. So, so just really quickly with the Iraq war, uh, the, the, the people in power at that time wanted to restructure the Middle East. In their, in, they didn't know anything about the Middle East. They didn't know anything about the Middle East. They, 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 they had the hubris, the arrogance to think <laughs> we, can, we can restructure the Middle East. We, we can get usher in regime change 
bring democracy to all these countries. And I'll go down in history as the guy that did that. And it was fucking hubris. Right. It was just arrogance. Right. Brian, here's where I disagree with you, okay? What you think is there's a motive of money and power. And like, and, and I sit there and I watch a lot of the political talk, especially a lot by people I love, and they're always breaking it down into money and power, money yes. and power. The people want more money and they want more power, even though they have all the power in the world that we just saw them shut down the world just two years ago, three years ago, and they print money. So they have all the money, they have all the power. What, what most of these talking heads, whether they're on television or they're on the internet, they never bring in spirituality. And it's, it's, it's God versus fallen angels. And this is where Soros is under that. It's this all fallen angel shit, dude. But what about it's this? It's a fan, war Sam? against spirituality, a war against God's creation. And that is it. And oh, you, but Sam, what about the idea that it's, it, it's, it's money power, but it's also legacy? Like, in other words, it's also like, I want to make the world. See, see yeah, but Brian, there, the there, problem there, I have with your statement yeah. is that when you tend to look at the children of these people, they tend to be giant fuck ups. They tend to co fall completely far. Well, that's what money the apples does. fall but from that, the tree. What, so there's the, their legacy isn't that is what billions shot. of dollars. I mean, does? look at the Bush legacy. You had a Bush run in Texas. He lost. He's running for like like librarian know, in Dallas, but, and he couldn't even win that. But that's kind of what happens to a human being when they when no, they the never Bush flew, legacy when is they, dead. Well, I, I have a joke about this. If your kid never flew commercially, they you should be arrested for child abuse because it doesn't work out for them. Right. right? And so when you have nothing to struggle against, it's like, you better be careful. Brian, right? it is God works. versus fallen angels. Well, I'm just telling you this well, at well, the highest level. Okay, but what about this? It's I all think, secret societies. I, I think the Every can, one of the Abrahamic religions have been corrupted by, by, by fallen angels. Okay, but, but, but so in Kings 1 and 2 in the Old Testament, the entire story is about fallen kings. It's about the kings of Israel that completely fucked up. Yep. And Israel split into two tribes. Yep. The 10 tribes in the north were Israel. The two tribes in the south were Judah. And it was a civil war on a level that went on for hundreds of years in Israel. And, and they were just a completely divided people. And the reason was that the kings in the north and the kings in the south forgot God's laws. Yep. And they were ruling basically on as, as basically what? Because of money and power. Fallen and, gods. And, they and, were yeah, sacrificing children. And, they were doing all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. So, so Moloch, so, bro. So, but that's Moloch. Still, that's, but that still goes on. So a lot of people. But a lot of people can be kings, thinking they are doing good. But if you don't have, if you're not beholden to, you know, higher truths, you will fuck up. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so you're you're bringing it back to sort of the old biblical lessons. But the the Book of Kings one and two is the story. Of how fucking how bad bad these kings were, yeah. And because why, all of them did what they thought was right, in their own eyes, not in the eyes of the Lord. That was the that was yes. the, the big lesson yes. of, of that section of the yes. Bible. So once hey, again, this is Bible study with Brian and Sam. I love. Hey, dude, listen to me. This is the most important of all the conversations. We could talk to her blue in the face about geopolitical bullshit, but in reality, it is all secret societies who worship dark arts that have had a hidden in hand in just the chaos that we but live I'm in. I'm going to leave you with a, with, a, with, a, with a thought because you've been breaking it down into God versus non-gods. Okay. Gods versus yeah. little G's. But my problem with that now is that you're dealing in a very dualistic world, Sam. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a little metaphor to think about, okay? And I want you to write yes. this down. Yes. What's the difference between a villain and a hero? When the, when, when the villain comes in and kills the eight-year-old boy's family, and he takes a knife and he marks him, and he goes, you'll remember something to remember me by. The villain, the hero, when he gets that cut and he's lost his family, says, the world hurt me, and I'm going to make sure that the world never hurts anyone else. The villain says, the world hurt me, and now I'm going to hurt the world. So we know what a villain is. Yeah. The problem with that is the hero now says, I'm going to go kill bad guys. I'm going to, I, I'm going to stop bad guys like that from doing that to another eight-year-old boy. Yeah. 
So he launches onto a campaign and he wages the good war. Problem is, like all good wars, there's a kid over there who gets his family killed. And now he says, the world hurt me and I'm going to make sure the world never hurts anybody else. Now you have heroes fighting heroes. Now, now the Vedanta, the Vedas, the Upanishad, the Gita would say, as long as you live in this dualistic world, we will always have conflict and war. Because good people exist on both sides and good people do terrible things in the name of the good they believe in. And until we realize that all of this is an illusion and that until you get in touch with your universal self, your soul, and you realize that we're all connected and we're all one, and you stop this dualistic thinking, we will never have peace. And that is the contribution of the Himalayan sages. That is the contribution of Dzogchen meditation. That's the contribution of the Vedanta. The Vedanta means the end of knowledge. And uh, if you guys want to change your life, you might want to read the Vedanta treatise. Take your time with it. Read three pages at a time. And as the Vedanta says, one, one uh, minute of reflection is worth 100,000 hours of reading. Reflection. The people you read that really make a difference, the people that make a difference in history, didn't get their knowledge from books. They got their knowledge by sitting and thinking and coming up with their own original ideas. I leave that with you guys. I'm going to be in and out of this show. Uh, uh, Dylan's going to be holding court with Sam. I'm going to be running around a lot. I'm very, very busy, but I can't walk away from this show because I love doing it too much. So if I'm not here sometimes, forgive me, but I'm probably somewhere contemplating the Vedanta and watching getting, interracial and getting, porn and getting even closer to God as if that's even possible because I know you guys can feel me vibrating right now. And remember this, this show is dualistic. There is truth on this side and there is folly on that side. <laughs> and until he sits at my feet and that includes you, Dylan, and you listen to me and you listen to We're me. all wearing Adidas. How crazy. That's good for Adidas, huh? This so anyway, Brian, 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 thank you for your serious voice you did for the last five minutes. You're so right. You're so welcome. Everybody. Yeah. Brian, Brian, oh, when, you, when yeah. Brian really wants you to know that he's getting deep, he talks in a whisper. I bring it down. Yeah. He brings it down. So it he down. really brings you in. Yeah. Thank you. Theater yeah, yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. I bring it um, down. Guys, this is the last episode of the year. Uh, we're very thankful that you guys have joined us. This is, I don't know how long the show has been going on. It's been going on a while. Brian is uh, going to be in and out. Dylan, based on the reception that he got last year. We'll be sitting in and crushing it and uh, having a good time. Uh, the show will go on. Uh, we are getting shadow banned pretty bad on YouTube. I mean, it is unbelievable. Uh, so we're going to try to do some stuff on Rumble. Uh, if you like the show, tell your friends about it. It's like a very unique show. It, the show is meant to be a debate show. You don't really see that anywhere else where it's usually guests come on to debate. So that's the show. This is, we like to debate stuff. Brian is really busy watching interracial pornography, yeah. so he can't make it every day, yeah. but he will make it as often as he can, hopefully. Fuck yeah. If not, Dylan will do a great job. It's probably a better conversation, but that's okay. Hey, uh, hey. <laughs> anyways, uh, so I love you all. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the show, saying the nicest things. You know, for a show that gets 10,000 views on Instagram, I mean, on on uh, on YouTube, we get an insane amount uh, of comments. Uh, shows that get like 50, 60,000 views get the same amount of comments. So obviously they're shadow banning us. We love you very much. Uh, thank you. Final thoughts? Anything Final goodbye? Thoughts happy is, holidays? I just appreciate you guys, and I love doing this, and happy holidays. And... Uh, yeah. We'll see you in the new year, everybody. Love you much. Love you guys. Love you, yeah. Brian. Love you too, buddy. When people ask, is everything a conspiracy? The answer is yes. Who and what is controlling everything and why? They, they practice sorcery. I can't argue against magic. <laughs> I don't know what it is that we live on, but I believe it's a realm. This realm that we live in is the lowest level of heaven, highest level of hell. Chicken snake gods and the Anunnaki and sorcery. If Sam says the chicken snake god is running everything, I'm literally in the world of crazy. <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> You're losing. 
Conspiracy Social Club, aka Deep Waters. Deep Waters. Deep Waters. Deep Waters.